I think I was just going to continue the thread we were just talking about the meeting about uh, kind of like development expectations. Development expectations, yeah, yeah. Development, ex- maybe not development, ex- well, maybe development expectations or okay. what, what you expect after 16. Um, Years old? Yeah. Okay. So the, you we, don't want to mention that you're in a different room today? We're in a different room today. Yeah. Um, this is going to be our hockey office, which okay. will be pretty cool when it's done. But I got a bit of a mess behind me, which you guys are probably used to from the old power tech gym anyways. Um, but I, I, I'd actually be sweet when you do a walkthrough like video of what's, yeah, what's in good. here. It's wicked, man. So yeah. um, nonetheless, we did our meeting in one of the dress rooms today, which is cool with all the stalls and all that jazz. Um, and so Dale was in there and Kyle, who are they're coaching with the Flyers. And obviously you're doing work with the Flyers. and um kind of like in bridging the academy to the Leamington program. Um, We were having some conversation about that. And so we started talking about some players and how guys enter into the system, whether it's Leamington for our example is what we're talking about, but it could be any junior team or any whatever program, OHL team. um, And what kids think they're, what kids and parents think it's going to be like, and then they get there and it's not what they thought it was going to be like. So here now we're in the, what is it? The second week of August. And this is kind of the time where teams start to set their rosters in terms of who plays where you set your top six, you set your bottom six guys that are getting scratched in and out of the lineup, how you do your deep, deep pairing, starting goalie, all of that. Um, so that's this is kind of the time where that stuff starts to happen, and guys who thought it would have been one thing are so we'll start to realize okay maybe they're not going to play as much as they thought maybe they're not going to have the role they thought maybe the team brought in extra guys that weren't supposed to be there and now they're there and now things are changing so we're talking about this more at the junior level or past AAA where rosters can change frequently and guys can get scratched and all that and the reason I want to talk about it is because the expectations from players and parents, it just feels like it's unclear. Even if coaches think they're talk, telling them about it and outlining what it's going to be and whether they are or not, I don't know because I don't remember it really being spelled out to me when I started playing junior either of like, this is how the ride is going to be. So be ready. Um, so maybe like, maybe to start, what are your kind of thoughts on entering into that junior bracket if you're not the guy that's the star guy and how do you think that like what 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 is the expectation so sometimes it doesn't even matter for the star guy like right like the expectations like you know i i've told this to kids when they go into their ohl interviews and stuff like that they said like if, if someone said what were your what your expectations be i said like you really can't have any you can't because you there's too many unknowns but my my expectations if i was a player would be um is that i'm going to try to earn everything I get. I'm going to try to learn everything I get. That's it. Learn and earn. That's it. I know that might sound like a little cliche thing, but it's actually couldn't be more clear. Now, when I talk to kids about stuff like that or parents, when they hear me, they selectively hear things, right? Because the thing is, is youth hockey to junior hockey and then pro hockey. Um, it's just, you cannot prepare for that. Like you, 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 you think that you can prepare for it, but are you, you good? Volume seems kind of low. Can you just pull it up to your face a little bit more? Yeah. It's like I'm eating it now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're good. Okay. okay. That's fine. Um, the expect, like, when you go into junior hockey, I don't think you can prepare for it enough. You, there are, like, so you said the top players might be different, but, like, not really sometimes. Like, when you get, it's the craziest thing. If you actually try to understand what's going to happen or what is happening, you'll go absolutely bananas. Um so you could be a high, high, high pick going into the CHL and you could be better than all, you still could be the best guy in the league coming in, but based on the team, based on the coach, based on whatever, you might get seven points that year or 10 points that year. And you're going to feel like, yeah, but I'm good. And you won't, what you won't understand because maybe it's that coach or the depth of the team or whatever it is, you're on the fourth line. That's it. And you can sit there as a family and start trying to, talk your way through it and, 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 and say, and you, what, what happens is you start comparing and you start making all these, like compare other guys on other teams. You start comparing who you're better than on this roster and stuff like that, but it's not your choice. 
you don't get to decide whether you're good enough. Do you know what I mean? It's like you can't sit there and say, I'm better than this guy. It's like that's your opinion. And but you can't even start to figure out. So, anyways, going into junior is like um it's just a hard year. And like I said before, I think I said this is a selective hearing. We hear what we want to hear, and then in, in general, I'm not saying everybody's like this, but even for ourselves, you don't hear you like when my kid went through junior is you don't want to hear what the downside could be, right? If you hear that, number one, if the, the organization talks to you about it, which they don't, very, very seldom, there's zero talk. So the communication on what you're going to get and expect and all that kind of stuff is like almost non-existent. And you can argue that maybe it should be better, but, it, you know, maybe, but it isn't. It is the way it is. Um, and I know in, in, in my son's case, like, the, the coach GM at the time and still he's still there. He's just very direct. And if you don't, if you don't take those five words that he said and actually listen to those five words and you just kind of go off and say, yeah, I didn't say much. No, no, they were important. Anyways, you, when you go into junior, uh, like so the selective hearing as you might have been told, you know, you got to earn your ice and there's 15, or there's, we're going to have, you know, you're, there's extra forwards. You're going to have to earn your spot. Practice is where you're going to be uh, developed, not necessarily in games. You might hear phrases like that, but you a lot of people hear those phrases and it'll go in ear one in one ear and out the other, and it's like, but I'll be different because the truth is everybody thinks that they're going to be different. They're not going to be the guy that gets scratched. They don't know. They, they don't think they're going to be the guy that doesn't get. You know, you're going to have to learn the defensive side of the puck before you score you get your points and it's like, yeah, I'll be different or I already know that side. And they kind of um, dismiss how good defensively you have to be before you get your opportunities. But all these things add up and then you find out very quickly that you're not different, that all these things happen to you and now it's got, you got to deal with reality. It's, it's a hard, and, and then for some guys walk into the league and they get to play and things are kind of good. And sometimes ignorance is bliss or sometimes they're just in the right spot in the right time and it works out for those first couple of years where it's supposed to be very hard sometimes they just slot it into a spot and it works out well and they end up first or second round draft picks in the nhl and it seems like everything's great but you just don't know what that path is going to be so my suggestion would be for players to as i always say is and again there's one of these things you could truly um just in one ear or out the other, it sounds like a cliche, but I really mean this, is underestimate how good you are. Like, underestimate how good you are. You might be drafted third overall, but underestimate your talent, meaning work hard and understand that other people are going to be way, way better. And then over overestimate how good everybody else is be so that you can push yourself. So if you go in there underestimating yourself, like how hard you work and all those different things, and you just go effort, 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 and re and, and overestimate how everybody is going to be good, then you just put it all together and you, you get what you get. Um, it's really hard, man. It's really hard. So, so what would you say is like the, if you had to outline the average experience of a 16-year-old or a seven, even a 17-year-old, and whether it's the OHL, Junior A, um, even Junior B, or whatever, what would what do you think the average experience looks like for that player in terms of ice time, whether it's number of minutes, number of shifts, how much they're going to play, whether or not they're scratched, what kind of opportunity they get when they do play? Like, If you had to map out, what does that experience look like for the average kid in that situation? Above, so, above average? Not, the average would be... The true average would be you're probably not going to play much. But what does that What does that mean, like specifically? The true average meaning, like if you took, uh, let's go OHL only, Ontario Hockey League only. Let's say you have three, three rookies per team. Let's say, like sixteen year olds. We'll call them 16, 17 year olds, first year guys. So that's uh, sixty players. Um, if you average all those sixty players. Like the true average of those sixty players is most kids aren't playing a whole lot. What, okay, what is a whole lot though? Like what is well, that? I'm talking like, like I'm like talking minutes. like three shifts a period right. tops. Yes, yes. Okay, and T then tops. And then what kind of shifts are those three shifts? They're they're not the important. No, nah, they're, they're all important. It's what I what I would call them are developmental shift, uh, 
uh, shifts. Because make no mistake, there's guys playing OJHL or different leagues that can replace that fourth line guy several times. Like, because they're just 19 years old or 18 years old. So, yeah, those shifts are typically grind them, don't get scored on against the other team's fourth line um, matchups. A five on five in the rule, like not critical minutes, not power play penalty kill, not crunch time shifts. And I don't know, like, this is why I'm asking the questions. I don't know what the expectation is. But it's normally not that. And I think it's to your point of they think they're going to be different or the parents think they can be different. And if you judge guys just on skill for skill, if you bring in, are bringing in on your OHL team a first, second, third round pick or whatever, that's a high, high skilled player. You might look at the second line right winger and say, my kid is higher skilled than this kid. And therefore, he should play there. But that isn't how she works, though. You know, because that kid is in his third year and understands how to get the puck off the wall better than you or understands how to block shot better than you or understands how to not cost defensive or yeah, not cost opportunities against better than you. And it's things that parents and players don't look for. And I I know because I remember doing it in junior man. Like I remember all I ever thought of is I could impact offensively more than you. That's all I ever thought. And I was probably right in certain ways. But again, this goes to you focus on what you want to focus on. I didn't want to focus on the fact that I didn't get the puck out three out of five times. I didn't want to uh, focus on the fact that every time I went out to block a shot, I didn't really want to be there. You know, those kinds of things are in the, the second, third effort in the battle or, or on the walls or staying on your D side or all these details that higher level hockey people are now looking at and caring about. I didn't want to pay attention to those things because I'm 16 years old and I'm a little kid still. And I think that the most important thing is that I can score or I can get a point, or I can do whatever. And say, that's what the parents think too most of the time. Well, like I was just using an example the other night where I was watching an OHL game live, and there's a power play. So one of our younger D, one of the younger D up at the top, right, at the flanks. So puck came across, and he sent it over to the, the uh, this guy's left side, which would be a right, right-hand shot one-timer. So it was like perfect, sent it over, and it was – he had to – the, the the shooter had to reach and bobble the puck. So I noticed that. A lot of people might not notice that pass not being perfect. Then, so recovered, bang, 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 zip it around again. So then got it to the same kid again. This time he had to like reach to get the puck and because way out of his reach. So mom and dad might look at that and say he's on the power run a good oh man he got him the puck couldn't get a shot off or maybe they didn't even see what that pass actually looked like but me watching it i'm going that kid can't shoot the puck ever if you if you give it like that's not even close to the wheelhouse so on that one power play there's two shots that could not happen and that may have been may have been goals may have been rebounds may have been saves who knows but they weren't shots because the the, the player that was dished off to couldn't couldn't handle the, not say he couldn't handle the puck. The power, it's not shootable, yeah. right? So that's mom and dad might go. He's on the power play. He's doing well. It's like, no, he's on the power play. He didn't do well. He actually, you, you we didn't get a shot off because of your yeah. pass. Yeah, we missed two opportunities. Yeah. Right. So like when mom and dads look at it, they say you got the opportunity. Or maybe it's the guy that's shooting the puck. You know, if it's in the wheelhouse and he doesn't get him off and he bobbles him, it's like mom and dad have to and the kid have to look at it and say i, I just I, maybe i'm not ready for this yet yes uh, maybe i'm not i'm not good enough maybe i have to be better right yeah and then it's like if you because then the next line of thinking for a lot of these a lot of parents a lot of players too is like well if you just give me a chance yeah you don't get a chance to to, to <laughs> do it and to try like i could then get i i can develop more you know and when you get to these levels in junior and that's why you always say like hockey's not hockey till you get to junior because now when Winning is the most important thing. Teams want to develop players so that yeah. they can win. Yeah. Winning is still number one. Yeah. Right. Well, so, that's all it is at that level. Right. So, so you're you have the luxury in AAA or in minor hockey or youth hockey or whatever, where the expectation is that the coaches and the organizations are trying to move kids on to higher levels, meaning that everybody needs to get opportunity, everybody needs to see the ice on the power play, penalty kill, and and get touches and experience doing all those things, which is good. But that isn't the reality of what happens when you get to higher level. And so parents will take that mindset of, well, if you just got a chance to do it, then that means he would be able to do it better than this guy because he's more skilled than this guy. 
and that's not the case at all. And you're not, you're not just owed that opportunity anymore, you know? And so this, this mindset is just, while I'm listening to you guys talk in the meeting there about some of these different examples that, that they're dealing with right now. And that I deal with, frankly, like when, when parents call me to talk about this kind of stuff, it's like, you know, it just, you don't, you don't know all the information. So it's hard to have a fair perspective when you're not someone that's behind the scenes, right? When you're just, when you're just mom and dad, or when you're just one of the players, you just don't have all of the information on what's going on on the backside to be able to confidently say, well, if you just got a chance to do this, like you would be able to develop better and all this stuff. It's like, you, you don't know what the variables are and what the coaches need to consider or well, yeah, or just that, what they need to consider as the coaches. Like, what are they trying to do? What is the actual goal? And p- people can think that they get it when you explain it to them, but but they don't actually get it when you're not the one in the driver's seat. You know, it's like you can tell people smoking is bad for you, but until they have a cardiac event, sometimes that message just doesn't sink in, man, because they haven't actually experienced what it's going to be like doing it the wrong way or, or whatever it is, you know? So those, I, I really liked how you highlighted that, though, those small pieces of, you missed a pass, even though it looked like you made the pass, you missed a pass. Who knows to judge that? The coaches know, right? The higher level people in the organization know. Some of the players might realize it, like that pass. Some, is and off, some, some not, but right? yeah. Some not. Yeah. But the vast majority of people just watching the game don't know whose fault that is, right? They don't know whose fault it is. If a kid bobbles a pass, was it the kid's fault for bobbling it or was it the guy's? that passed it yeah. and it could be either. Yeah. It depends on the situation. It could be either. It could but be you just both. don't know. You don't have the know-how necessarily to be able to judge that. And that's actually critically important. And those are the kinds of details that we're talking about now. Those are the kind of yeah. details that we're looking at. Like yeah. we talked to Matt. Well, it's, Matt. it's even, you know, you look at passes coming up the ice or whatever. It's like the difference of making, I'm using passing for example, is, is the, the guys that deserve to be on the ice. They, when, when it's, they don't do the offside passes. They don't, pass it when you're coming up it's not in the skates it's on the tape or it's in the area or when you get a when you make a play and you it squirts out and there's a two-on-one that lasts for a split second but if that puck moves and you see it you make the play and it's in the back of the net or it's a real quality shot instead of oh what do i do here panic like that's experience and that's the next level of what junior hockey is about is a kid that's played again sticking to the ontario hockey league a kid that's played uh 67 or 65 games as opposed to 12 has experience just like the nhl right the more experience you have the more you've been in that situation right so a kid that's played maybe in his third year that's in 100 and almost 200 games or something like that under his belt is going to be more experienced to see these things right providing he's still a good player but that's where the difference uh th- those that's where the game breakers are right so I, like i i notice a lot of that inexperience in the in the young guys when they're making plays it's like you just haven't done that enough or you're still feeling the pressure of trying to make good plays or get your points or you know oh i got a, a chance here and you can see like the excitement and it's like the play doesn't happen the way a veteran will you can hang on and just okay i'm going to make the play no this is a shot now like all that stuff and the other thing is uh I was just as I'm just trying to get this off my off my space is or off my head is um, when we were talking about you know what the junior experience is like. So for example, for example, is I'll use Jet Luchenko for a cha- for a, an example. So Jet was a first round pick to uh, uh, to Guelph, and he came in. You could see that he could skate, he could make some plays, and all that kind of stuff. So being a 13th or 12th overall or 14th overall in the OHL. He was a really good player. Probably, maybe, I, I'm not even sure. He's a pretty thick kid, but I don't know if at the time if he was a little bit light. But he came into the league and for sure, with his brain and his work ethic and his skill and his speed, for sure, I'm, I'm sure he thought, like, good humble people though, right? Like, this guy's all work. But good humble people, like the whole family, I'm sure he came in as an offensive player saying, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm a first round pick. He got fourth line minutes with a dabble in some power play and the odd go up to third minutes line. So that was his first year. He got hurt a little bit too. But if you would have looked at his first year in the OHL, I think he had 
But just so everyone knows, I'm not carving the kid. I, I'm just saying. Fuck, what first round NHL pick, yeah. man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, Starting the but, year but in this Philly. is my point. Is like he's a, and he's a first round OHL pick, and he might. I think he had 12 points. Maybe I could be off by one or two. So if he will look coming from a big program where he's an offensive player coming into the league, and you're getting on the fourth line with a sprinkle of a little bit of power play here and there, to get 14 points and not getting all those that ice, you can be very disappointed. And that's one of the best players in Ontario, like or in the in the CHL actually at that time being a first round pick, right? So that's what. So if you're expecting to do better than that, like God bless you, you can. There's the things that happen, right? But then his second year, with especially with Potsy being on, he was on the ice all the time, and he but he rose to the occasion and became a first round pick, and he's sticking with Philadelphia right now. We'll see how long he stays in Philadelphia. It might be the whole year, it might be nine games, it might be two games, whatever. But you know, God bless him. Whatever happens, he's sticking the NHL. That's the difference a year of experience in the OHL can make. Yeah, 14. But you have to, like, I love John Tortorella last year. I, I heard it somewhere how he was basically talking about how some people want it now, want this, want this, want this. And he said, sometimes you just have to learn to wait your turn. It's not like, wait your turn, okay, can I get to play? No, you go and earn it. You got to do everything right for a period of time. And then your turn, your your time will come. And that's, with junior hockey, it's just one of those things that it's, and I'm not minimizing it. Your first year for most people sucks. Sucks. Because you don't know if you're going to get scratched. You don't know if you're going to get more than six or eight shifts in a game. You're probably not going to get a penalty kill. You're probably not going to see important ice. You're probably going to get all the shit that goes downhill comes to you. You're going to have to get, um, if there's an extra skate that you have to do, you're doing it. You, you're, 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 your first year is like, it's not necessarily fun as, as I, and I'm qualifying that because it's still hockey and it's still the best, but you're just always like, I just want my chance. I just, it, all these emotions going through and stuff. Well, it's your first year sucks for most people. So, well, so he had 14, I just looked it up. He had 14 his first year. Um, and then 68. Yeah, seriously. And then sorry, 70 something his second year. So, do that you've said this before do that experiment with any player any player doesn't matter who outside of not even 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 mcdavid was about a point a game in his first in his first year in the ohl um yeah maybe i I can't remember it i think you're right but even at even at the extreme it's like he's a point a game he wasn't mcdavid right away right but anyone else that's not the one percent of the one percent of the one percent go look at their development arc through junior look at the first two years compared to their second two you know, look at guys in the NHL. Look at guys that uh, are playing junior A. Got, look, any league, it's the same. Any NCAA, whatever you want. Very rarely are they hopping in. Very rarely are they hopping in and just dominant right away. You know, so people need to know that because you go in with, and it's, I know it's, I know it's hard, but you, you, know, you go in with these expectations and especially if no one is explaining it to you, even if someone is explaining it to you, it doesn't matter. Like a lot of times you're going to think it's going to be different or whatever still, but at least if somebody lays it out for you, maybe, well, the, maybe it, the, the biggest piece of that is that, are you willing to listen? Yeah. That's, that's what I was saying to the coaches. Yeah. I said, you could, you know, it's like, it would be really nice if first of all, it would be awesome as a hockey player and as a family, you knew, okay, you're going to the Windsor Spitfires, Eric, we want you to be part of this team, but you're really not part of like, they would never say it like that, but you're not part of the team yet, right? You're you're going to be here. You're going to work hard. Your practices are your games. You're going to get some ice. Wait, say it again. Your practices are your games. Yeah. Your practices are where you're going to get that's your development. Important point. Yeah, highlight. that's where you're going to develop. You're going to develop by because, like, think about it. Just remember that, okay? Practice your games, um, and you're going to you possibly get scratched. You you um, minimal shifts. And it is what it is. And for parents to be able to say, okay, I actually hear what you're saying. Every third game, I might get scratched. Maybe. Might be scratched four in a row. Okay. Games are my thing. We're watching you in your games. And when you go out there, you, if you can, in a real game, sorry, we're watching your practices. You practice well, you do your habits well. That's good. When you play your games, your minimal ice that you're probably going to get, your habits need to be really good. If that's going well, you get have a less likelihood of being scratched, but it doesn't mean that you won't. But it's though you're doing the right things. You're on a developmental path for the next for this year and maybe even two years, maybe even three. Right. Um, so 
that's what they have to hear. But the problem is, that's not what people typically hear. They probably typically hear they typically hear that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll be different. That's and that's just the truth. Because I've talked to several parents about their junior thing, and they 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 get way ahead of it. They think their way is going to be different, and then they start the comparisons. They start all these things, and then they get in their own head, and it's a shit show. And it's like it's just the way it is. And you know what? won't make a difference. Like I know people say for your for your NHL draft, let's say your NHL draft, I said, yeah, that's fine. But it, even if you do have the opportunity to get drafted in the third round, it's like at the end of the day, when you're 23, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Whether you played your first year or not, it's what you did while you're not playing. So what did I ask you to just jot down? Practices are your games. Practices. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I want to say about that was what you have to remember is that you are, if you're playing in the, um, in the OHL, NHL, whatever. Your practices are your games. You might say, well, that's kind of, what does that mean? No, you impress your coach in practice. So it doesn't mean pretend work hard, actually work hard. Battle the older guys. So you do realize if you're a 16-year-old kid, you get to practice, as Max said, you get to practice three, four, five times a week with 21, 20, and 19-year-old players that are the best in the world. So if you want to go to that practice and just kind of float around, then that's on you. If you want to actually compete against them, that's where you're going to get better, right? Competing and, 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 and getting in the mix with them, like battle drills are actually battle drills and trying to keep up. That's where you're going to get better. That's your devel- development. Yeah, I love that. That's the practices are your games. That's real, a nice way of thinking about it. Like that is where, uh, that is where you're but, doing but, your work. But dude, right? it was no different. Remember Dal- Dalton Prout and all, all my friends that play in the NHL, like if you are not top six, and sometimes even if you are, if you're not that top guy, your practice, you get evaluated at your practice. If you didn't have a good practice, get, we're going to scratch it tonight. You got to be better in practice. You're sitting there going, practice? Yeah, practice, man. That's where you have to shine. Because I need you to be good in practice for your eight minutes tonight. Right? So Prouder, you know, you talk about it all the time. He goes, he had to dial it in for practice. Don't get beat on a one-on-one. Be a, a menace out there or whatever, right? During practice, that's crazy. Well, my, my, so my last thing is just like on the flip side of it, because I was thinking of it still while we were talking as the, like listening to the coach perspective, it's easy. This is maybe like, like, uh, all the coaches that are agreeing with me right now, like that are listening and they're like, yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Well, this is a check for the coaches too, because it's like, are you explaining this to the kid? That's not going to get it. Are you at least trying to do your job to let them know this is what it's going to be? when you come in here, because I think that's a gap on the coaching side where they can improve. Not that they owe it to anyone, but just that it's a good, it's a, it's a way to get buy-in so that the kid isn't poopy pants or thinking that they're a shitty player or, cause I remember that man. Like if I was, if I was uh, on the fourth line, like my first year of junior and I didn't play for eight minutes, that's where my brain would go right away. I'd either be like frustrated and blaming, like I'm better than you and I should be playing instead of you. Or I would go to, I'm no good. And or- now, just before I forget, one thing that you probably should do is look deep into your soul. <laughs> no, really. Look deep into your soul and sit there instead of having poopy pants and instead of saying, I'm better, the comparison game and all that shit. Maybe the question is, what can I do to impact this game? What can I do to impact um, the coach's mindset about me? What can I do? So if you're 16 years old and you're a skilled guy or you're whatever, you're, you're a guy on the team, like there might be something that you can do to garner everyone's attention. It might be throwing a big hit, right? If you've never thrown a big hit before, maybe that or going around and bumping two, three guys per shift and then coming off exhausted that, you know, you might not have touched the puck or whatever as a young guy, but you did one thing. Maybe it is, being a rat going out there and hacking somebody a little bit or get, get, when the, when the whistle goes getting inside the, the the crease and you know taking a swing or something at the goalie or a couple guys to get some attention to get some maybe you draw a penalty you've done something for your team and if you add some maybe it's a block shot maybe it's I don't know something that you can measure or you could that the coach and everyone could see that you're like no I'm gonna do something outside of my vanillaism. Right, because if you continue to have vanilla, 
Well, throw, okay, a, so, throw a chocolate chip in there, man. So okay, so so I agree, but for a lot of kids, me, I was one of them. Sometimes it takes that, like somebody saying that to me. Like I always use that example, like when Billy Bowler said that to me for the first time. I'm and there, he brought me in for a meeting finally after I was poopy pants for twelve games, and he's like, "Hey, man, do something, or I'm taking you out." That was it. Like that was the conversation. I know you think you're good and skilled and all that shit, but you're useless right now. Find something else to do. Or I have to take you out. And then I was like, oh, like, that makes sense. And that just, no one ever said that information to me before. So my point of that is that whole spiel you just went on. If you're a coach listening to this podcast and you agreed with everything we said up to this point, you can provide that input to guys on your team where you, you don't have to. It's not something that coaches have to do, especially at higher levels. But if you have that conversation with a kid that's a fourth liner or a kid that's in and out of the lineup or whatever, and you say, hey, Ask yourself the question, what can you do to make me change my mind as the coach? What can you do to make me want to put you in? What are some of those things you can do? That might be very helpful for a kid that's never heard that before, you know? And so there's a little bit of this, like, just as a send off that I want to leave with the coaches is that maybe try to give the kid a little bit of help. Because I think about this all the time when I hear coaches talk about, you know, like this kid's not doing this and this kid's shitty and this kid's shitty. And I even think about it for myself coaching, if I'm ever thinking that about a player, I always try to come back to, hey man, you weren't that good either about myself, you know, because I wasn't that good. That's why I'm not playing the NHL right now. So when I'm, am I, I don't want to set uh, an unreasonable expectation on kids because I remember being the kid and not knowing the information and struggling to get the puck out and turning it over in the middle and not wanting to block a shot. And being the kid that wanted was blaming and thinking I should be playing over this guy. And I remember being all that, all of that. So if you're now a coach, which I am, and I'm, I'm thinking about these other kids that I'm now coaching, that they shouldn't be doing those things that I'm doing. It's like, yeah, but you did all those things too. So maybe have the conversation to try to get them through that shit instead of just leaving them to think that because you're now Joe coach and, and you don't owe that to them or whatever. Because I remember how impactful that was for me to hear from yeah. my coach. You know? I, yeah. So I'll, I'll finish. I'll, I'll finish on your finish. <laughs> so I agree. I agree. I, I really do think like for me, I agree that in an ideal world, a coach should be able to spend time with every player and say um, to go over their game. Right. They should 100%. And, and, and it would be nice. It would be a better world if a kid came in and you had, they had some expectations and then you spent some, gave them some love and care about how they're playing, what they should do to improve their game. Yes. And I think, um, I think it's, it's great in, in an ideal world, but what, and, and I think you're going to agree with me to a certain point here as a coach. Ready? Sometimes it just gets tiring and I'm not saying to do the job, but if I'm constantly at some point, how Eric, many times do I got to say it? Yeah, man. Eric, at some point, yeah. do you want it or not? Because some, and I think I think to be fair to a lot of coaches, not because I think I agree with it totally, it's your job. But at at the junior pro level, I think at some point, it's just like, you know what? I've been doing this for 12, 15, 20, 30 years. I've seen this song and dance before. The kids that want to make it are going to make it, and the kids that don't don't. And I don't really have a lot of time to actually sort this out in my little pea brain anymore. And that's, I think, where, where that comes across a lot because there are kids, several of them. And I would say, I'm going to actually go out on them and say more than, more often than not, most kids are not actually in. In. I want to be a player. That's just the truth. Um, but I think sometimes sorting it out, you might find a, a diamond in the rough there. But I think, uh, I think, you know, to your point, it would be nice if you can get things laid out. It'd be nice if you can follow it and have a little bit of patience and a little bit of time to go over and say, you're doing good. Just do this. I and, do. But I agree fully, like yeah. to a point. Yeah. To a point. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. once you lay it out the first time, yeah. it's like, okay, yeah. maybe a second time. Yep. Okay. And yeah. then it's like, I, and I, I wouldn't say that applies at the, it'd be nice at the pro level or even higher level junior, but like for, for guys that are pro now, like you should know what your job is, what you're supposed to do while you're there, or you should be asking the question because you're an adult now, you know, you should be figuring it out if no one's telling you. But for, I'm more curating that for the younger 
cohort, let's say, like if you can lay it out once or twice. But after that, like I totally agree. Like it's like, hey man, that's enough. Like you, he, you ain't getting it, you ain't listening. And now, now you can come to me if you have a question, and you're gonna get what you get. And I think that's fair at at a certain point. But um, but yeah, I think because it was interesting hearing the different perspectives from the different coaches today when we were talking about it. So I thought that was it's a timely topic because this is about the time of the season where that stuff starts to creep in where guys are trying to figure out their roles and where they fit in the lineup and all that kind of stuff. But I think it's a good perspective for parents too, is just remember that it's in, you're in a different ball game now, man. Last point on that. Yeah. <laughs> I no, got some, but, the, but the other thing is that we're, so what happens with the, with the, uh, with the head is where, where a lot of people go with this is they look at, okay, if this isn't working. I need another option. Yeah. So like that's trade. I'm going to go somewhere else. Trade me. I, you know, it's going to be better, better somewhere, somewhere else. It's like, you sure. Yeah. Are you sure? Because it might not be, uh, I use a term, I can't use that anymore. Anyways, it, it might not, it might not be, yeah, but it might not be the team. It might be you, or maybe you're just not ready. So just always really, really, really take a look at, you know, for if, you, if you think it's going to be better somewhere else, like really, really look at what you're doing and, and how you're going to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. So, sure. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I got to go. So that's all. See you guys next week. Bye.